Hello, well, thanks a lot for being here. That's the biggest turnout so far. So I'm on Tommy. This is an informal discussion, right? So this is why we're like like this. Feel free to ask questions anytime. This is not a person demonstrating knowledge or something else. It's about you learning a few things. She's done more than we've done here. She's doing things, campaigns, everything else. She knows stuff. So we're here to ask her questions and have this question, right? Uh, so I'm, I'm Tommy. Uh, this is Dark Music Talks. Um, basically, I'm a musician myself and doing a little bit of marketing as well. But because I saw that nobody really cares about what musicians know and nobody strives to, to give them some education except if you're in a music college. I said, all right, I'm going to talk to some experts that know things and bring them to come and talk to musicians that want to learn. And this is how it started in January, in a, in a rainy afternoon in Leicester as well. 18 people came, I think it was just a minute. Yeah, there isn't one person that was in the first one. And since then we started growing. But the important part is we kept the discussion going. It was a discussion, it was not a lecture, right? So, I'm one of you, we're all the same, we all care about music, we do it here because you want to learn things, so it's about the discussion. That was it. We're going to do one every month, at least one, so you will receive emails about what's happening and everything else. Don't put it in spam folders or anything else. Um, so, this is what this is all about, and we're lucky, normally we facilitate the event in another place. Uh, around Victoria uh, tube station, but now we're here in Barbican because we're part of Hack the Barbican, which is basically um, the whole month of August that will refurbish all the big, the big venues, so they give all the public spaces to creative individuals to make collaborations, projects, whatever. So that was the right place at the right time, and here we are in Barbican. Hope you enjoy it. Uh, don't video tape me. Don't put it in YouTube. Um, hope you enjoy it, ask questions, it's all about being creative, but let's start. Hello? Yeah, that sounds like a good evening. Brilliant. Okay, my name is JC Schooler. Uh, we're going to start off my talk. Um, as Tommy said, let's make it as informal as we need. Uh, you might notice here on the title we've got a couple of hashtags, darker music talks, and direct to fan. Feel free to use those should you decide to tweet or uh, post a about today. Okay, so starting off, who am I? Jesse School is my name. I am the director of an agency called Wixdeep Works, and we specialise in direct to fan. Uh, I come from a town called Wanganui in New Zealand. Uh, you may have noticed my accent, I'm told that I have one. I've been in London for six years trying to shake that accent. Uh, but my background is in music licensing, uh, artist management, and in law before that. Um, and most recently, uh, before starting my own agency, I worked with the company called Tops and Media, which some of you might be, might be familiar with. This is uncool. <laughs> Bear with me. Right. So now I know who I am and how good I am at fixing my neck. Tell me, I want to know uh, who you guys are. Uh, can you please put your hand up if you're a musician? Cool. There's a lot of musicians in the room. It's great. Um, if you're an artist manager, cool. A few of those. And who hasn't put their hand up? They put your hand up now. Okay, you go through. Different kind of music industry folk from guessing. That's cool, thanks for that. Alright, so you finished your album, addressing the artists in the room, um, or you're close to finishing it and you're starting to plan for your release. First and only question do you have a network of supporters um, with whom you can communicate your activities? Before you come anywhere near to selling, whether it's your album, uh, merchandise, or tickets, uh, you need to ensure that you have a network of fans and basically a market to sell to. Nobody wants to be playing to an empty room. So 
the best saving you can do for yourself and your career is to plan your launch, plan your lead time that is the months leading up to your release date. And make the time to connect with your fans first. Okay, so I'm going to run through the topics we're going to look at in the next 30 to 40 minutes. We're going to look at uh, what is direct to fan. We'll touch on an album launch timeline. We're going to run through a best practice data capture process. Uh, we're going to go through an album pre-sale structure and we're going to finish with a discussion on how you might go about keeping your fans engaged. Uh, if I use any jargon that you're not familiar with, please do stop me. Ask me what if that means. Um, questions? Let's take those as they come. Okay, so let's take a, maybe start by having a step back and look at what exactly I mean when I talk about director fan. Now, the first thing I want to point out about director fan is that this is not a new concept. Our mailing lists, fan clubs, these have existed pretty much for the whole time we've had an entertainment industry. What is new is the means of accessing your fans via software platforms and the internet. So the director fan platforms, uh, the new, newly accessible platforms, are really what's giving director fan as a channel its growth in uh, today's market. So what is director fan? This is a way for us to make extra money from selling their stuff. Um, for example, the average transaction on iTunes, you're looking at around two to three pounds. But with direct fan transactions, the average is actually closer to 22 pounds. Quite a big difference. Uh, direct fan provides a platform for artists to build a relationship directly with their fans. And uh, it sits along other channels, so um, HMB, Amazon, iTunes, those sort of traditional ways to market. So if we look at direct fan uh, as an additional sales channel, um, what we can have is retail campaigns running alongside, uh, maintain strong relations with your digital and your traditional retail partners, and at the same time build yourself up a strong direct fan business. So how is the big question I think at this point. Uh, there's three ways we look at. We've got uh, engaging, connecting, and uh, offering something special and giving your fans a reason to buy from you. Uh, so if we look at each of these in a little more detail, we start with the online presence. The director fan, making sure that your website, your social media profiles, any other touch points online are ship shape and uh, exactly the way they should be in the best possible working order is the first thing. And this can include uh, using data capture widgets, uh, which exchange digital content for an email address. Jargon alert. Does anyone know what I mean when I say widget? Nobody. Yeah, Facebook app or something. That's, yeah, that's a good point. Okay. When we talk about widgets, I think back to my um, fifth form economics class where widgets were a meaningless term for a commodity that your companies were buying and selling. But nowadays, um, like you say, it's, it's kind of a casual term which refers to a piece of embeddable or shareable content. So something like an email sign-up form or a streaming player for all your video. Something that you can take a code for and put, put elsewhere on your website, on other websites. Okay, the second how is connect. Um, every artist has a unique voice, and the key is in finding that voice, the voice which will resonate with your fans, the same way that the music resonates with your fans. But getting fans onto your email list is the hardest thing, and then keeping them there, well, that's the next hardest thing. Um, and the artist really has to find the balance of communication and keeping fans interested, but not overwhelming them or boring them. So artists using direct to fan can start a conversation um, and let fans see inside the creative process uh, just as much or as little as they're comfortable with. So this could be for some artists uh, like a, an ad hoc video from behind the scenes at the recording studio. Uh, maybe it's a tweet about what's on the writer we did tonight. Um, or something a little more enigmatic like an obscure Instagram photo. The goal here is to create a relationship of trust and loyalty. Something like a tribe. And in that way, your fans may choose to take on your message and to share it, and effectively to become your co-marketers. Okay, the third how is to give fans a reason to spend their money. And we do this by offering something special, something compelling. 
and this could be something high quality, exclusive, uh, limited edition, numbered, signed. Uh, for example, this is the deluxe offer from uh, 30 Seconds to Mars recent preset. Now it includes all these items, so we've got here a t-shirt, poster, drumsticks, picks, and guitar picks, vinyl, I don't even know what all these things are. Uh, it also included a thank you phone call from the band. So this is, this is the deluxe offer. Has anyone got some guesses for me about how much the price tag is on this one? Was that? 69 Okay. Anyone else have a guess? More guesses. 300. 300. 300, okay. That's a 20. This one retail at um, $50,000. This is a man, right? I mean, it is. So that's around 650 pounds. Uh, I'm not suggesting you guys put 650 pound offers on your pre-sale, but um, this is an example of what's out there in the market today. And we're going to take a look at how you're going to structure your offers and what you're going to price them at a bit later. Okay, so once your sales are done, um, besides building this lasting relationship with the fans and making extra money, uh, what you're left with, uh, if that's enough, is a whole lot of data. And this is data that you just don't get through the traditional retail channels. So uh, just imagine I'm an artist, um, I have my album stocked with iTunes, with H&B, which is where the record stores are still going. Um, a fan comes to the store and buys this record, that's great, I get some royalties, hopefully, eventually. Uh, but what I don't get, what I'm missing out here on, um, is the chance to actually follow up with that fan and engage with them. Tell them about my next album, tell them about some remixes from that album, tell them about my show that's coming out in their town next week. So some examples of data that you can um, glean from your sales. What's the ratio of albums versus tracks purchased by my fans? What proportion of purchases opted in uh, to receive emails from my artist? How many times was my widget shared? How many clicks did each share generate? Uh, and which channel was most popular? Facebook, Twitter? <coughs> which were the top purchaser countries from my last campaign? What you can see here is that data sourced from direct fan campaigns really gives you a picture of your fans and what their preferences are. And that's going to be invaluable when it comes time to plan your next campaign and what your next set of offers is going to be. So that is a uh, director fan in a nutshell. Should I stop now and ask if anyone has any questions? Or just move right on. Hi. Oh, do you want to do the mic some questions? Hold on. Interactions that your fans can see and coming from you. I think that's absolutely 